And this focus in, on Israel as responsible, or a focus on the territorial dimensions of this conflict, is simply misguided. Our academics, our media, some of our politicians are wrong also in their theory, in the theoretical approach they take, in their definitions of law, in their understandings of the history, the complexity of the realities on the ground, and most important, the morality, in terms of which side is looking to and promoting a moral as well as a just potential solution to our conflict. And they're wrong in the language they use. Not only, and I did stress the issue of legality, the fact that the word, word illegal settlements, the phrase illegal settlements, is always thrown around by politicians, as well as by intellectuals, as well as by the media. Those settlements are not prima facie illegal. Even if you oppose those Jewish communities within the West Bank, Judea, and Samaria territories, that doesn't make them illegal just because it's said over and over and over again that for some reason, somehow, that they're illegal. And other language, like calling the leaders of Saudi Arabia that bastion of liberal democracy, which allows no Christian or Jewish worship in any part of their territory, which allows no woman to drive without the accompaniment or permission of their husband or father, or to travel or to work without that same permission, to call the king of Saudi Arabia a moderate <laughs> is an abuse of language which doesn't serve either journalistic purposes nor, more importantly, the political purposes of good policy making on the part of our leaders. One of the reasons that I focus so much on these issues of terminology with the media in my work at Media Central is because I believe that the media's use of language and approach to these issues is instrumental in the formation of policies throughout Europe and America. Let's do together a thought experiment for 30 seconds. Just imagine for a minute if the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, CNN, ABC News, and National Public Radio for the last 30 years had accurately portrayed the kind of pronouncements in Arab and Muslim and Palestinian media, the kinds of educational content in Palestinian society, the kinds of rhetoric used throughout the Arab and Muslim world to delegitimize Israel, to deny and reject a connection between the Jewish people and the land of Israel, let alone the legitimacy of the establishment of the Jewish state of Israel. If the media had accurately portrayed that as is as it is, as I believe, the primary uh, opposition, the primary obstacle to peace in the Middle East, I would imagine that this administration in Washington, as well as European governments, would not spend so much time pressuring Israel, but would spend more time pressuring those moderate leaders of Fatah. The Palestinian Authority, or Hosni Mubarak, the dictatorial authoritarian president of Egypt, which is and just happens to be for the last decade the largest publisher of the book, The Protocols of Elders of Zion, that anti-Semitic tract which charges Jews with a nefarious control over the world's uh, economy and media and what have you. In the world, that moderate leader, Hosni Mubarak, if this was actually portrayed and understood by our policymakers. I believe that we would be facing different policies today, policies that would be better for America, and by dint of the fact that America and Israel share the same common, both goals and values as well as enemies, better for Israel. I'd like to close with a few specific policy recommendations that would